Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, hey guys! Good morning, K through fifth graders. It's great to be worshiping together with you this morning. Why don't we get started with some prayer? Lord God, I thank you for this morning. God, I thank you that um, you um, reveal yourself to us in your word. Thank you that you've given us your word to learn. Um, and God, I pray this morning that as we open it, that we are able to just understand the gospel more deeply and understand who you are more deeply. In your name, amen. All right, guys, let's get started with the rap. Hey, Wick! Hey! You know we are almost through Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 20, gang! This month, we are doing Ephesians 6, verses... 18 through 19, and we're gonna go through these verses three times right now, and then we're gonna take it from the top. That's right, let's do it! With all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me. In opening my mouth, boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. With all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me. In opening my mouth, boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. With all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me. In opening my mouth, boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. All right, let's wrap it out now. Wrap Woo! It up! Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Good one, right? 
Envy is an emotion we feel when we desire to have something that belongs to someone else. What are some things we could be envious of? Maybe、uh, we are envious because someone's a better athlete than us, or they're funnier, or smarter. Everyone struggles with envy. Here's another question: Have you ever been envious of your brother or sister? <laughs> I know I have. Well, in today's story, we will learn how Moses' brother Aaron and sister Miriam struggled with envy. So let's get started. Let's open our Bibles up to Numbers 12. All right. Now, Aaron and Miriam, Moses' brother and sister, fell into the exact same trap as all the other Israelites by complaining again. They became jealous and envious of Moses and complained about him. Let's look in Numbers twelve two, and they said, Miriam and Aaron, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has He not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. <gasps> uh oh, friends. <laughs> There was no reason for Miriam and Aaron to complain against Moses. In fact, the very next verse says that Moses was the most humble man on the face of the earth. He was their leader. And he never bragged about it. Still, they did complain, and just as before, the Lord heard it. And suddenly, the Lord spoke. <laughs> he called Aaron and Miriam and Moses down to the tent for a meeting, and the Lord came down to the entrance of the tent in a pillar of cloud. He called Aaron and Miriam forward and corrected them. He told them that Moses, he was not any ordinary prophet. God spoke to other prophets through dreams and visions, but with Moses. God spoke to him face to face. Now God rebuked them for speaking against Moses, as they had, because it showed that they did not honor God's choice. When the cloud lifted from that place, Miriam's face turned as white as snow from a very dangerous disease called leprosy.、Ooh. Just then, Aaron turned to Moses and repented for what he had said and done. He pleaded with Moses to keep his sister from suffering such a cruel disease. Moses cried out to the Lord to heal his sister. Now, normally, someone with leprosy wouldn't be allowed to continue living with their people, but God once again was gracious to the Israelites and to Miriam. Miriam would only have to be shut out from the camp for seven days, then she could be healed and she could return to the Israelites again. So Moses and the people waited for seven days, and once Miriam had returned and she was healed, they set out again. Wow! Now that's what I call sibling rivalry. That was a good story, you guys. Now, let's stop and think, though. Where is Jesus in this story? Can you find him? He's definitely there. Let's start by comparing the pride of Aaron and Miriam compared to the humility of Moses. Who God said in Numbers twelve three was the most meek and humble man on the face of the earth. Wow! Now Moses, whose life and ministry was he was just a shadow of Jesus who was coming, but was also a picture of Jesus's humility, because no one humbled himself more than Jesus, who came to earth and died for us on a cross for our sins. Now let's consider the humble response also of Moses when Aaron and Miriam came before God in the tent of meeting and complained against him. They had no right, but Moses did not object to what they said. And when Miriam was struck with leprosy, Moses remained humble. He cared for her and he interceded with God for her. In the same way, Jesus prayed for his enemies, those who mocked and crucified him. Look here. In Luke twenty three thirty four, where Jesus says, "Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do." <laughs> Pretty amazing. Let's take some time to think about the lesson we learned today from God's word. In fact, let's take some time to pray. And by that, I mean the word pray. So we're gonna break it up: P R A Y, P for praise, R. For repent from our sins, A for ask for God's help, and Y for yield to His perfect will. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, 
We praise you for being the perfect sacrifice for coming down from heaven to earth to live a perfect life and dying on the cross for us, Lord. God, we repent from our sin and we ask for forgiveness for what we have done against you. And God, we ask for your help that you would help us to put our faith in you alone. And God, we also yield to your perfect will, knowing that you know what's best for our lives. Amen. Good job, Foothill Kids. And hey, parents, don't let our lesson stop there. Go ahead and scroll down that PDF to the Follower of Jesus page. This is a great way to walk through what it means with your child to be a follower of Jesus. Hey, maybe this is the first time that you've ever talked to your child about it. Let it ha have fun with this. In fact, we like to say that following Jesus is like running a race. And you'll see more what I mean in the Follower of Jesus page. And then it's a great time to look at those family Devo questions. Take some time tonight over dinner to talk and meditate about the story we learned today. So don't go away. We have our wrap up video coming up next and then our animated lesson video. All right, have fun. Good afternoon, this is Arthur. Any more donuts? And today, in the world of athletic competitions, Miss Jenny Humble will be declared the most decorated athlete in the world. Jenny? What? Yes! No way! Yes, indeed, folks. Jenny Humble will be declared the most decorated athlete in the world. If Jenny becomes the best athlete in the world, what will my life look like? Oh no! This is terrible! I am clearly the better athlete. I'm faster. Oh, I'm stronger. And I always win. Duh. You know, Jenny, she's nice and all and she has some skills, but she's not as good as I am. It's not fair that she gets to be known as the, the greatest, best athlete in the whole entire world. I mean, God hasn't only given her the gift of athleticism. Hasn't God given me the gift of athleticism too? Oh, great. Who's calling me now? Hello? Oh, hey, hey, Sue. Oh, hi, Jenny. Uh, I was just talking about you. Oh, really? Wow, what a coincidence. I, I was just calling to see if maybe you'd want to come and, you know, work out with me. We've got that big race coming up, you know? Okay, sure. Um, I mean, uh, no. Uh, no, no thanks. I mean, uh, okay, I'll just say it. I don't want to work out with you because, well, I'm jealous you've been declared the most decorated athlete, and it doesn't seem fair. That should be me. There. I said it. Oh, gosh. I, I'm sorry you feel that way, Sue. You know, you kind of sound a lot like Miriam from the Bible. Who's Miriam? I've never heard of her. Oh, Miriam. Well, she was Moses' sister, remember? Miriam helped save baby Moses as he floated down the Nile River and, and, and was there when Moses' daughter found him. And, and then she reunited Moses with their mom. And then years later, he returned to Egypt and God used Moses to help Miriam and their brother Aaron and all the other Israelites out of slavery. And then he- Oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know. He parted the Red Sea. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did, Sue, and, and, and he was chosen by God to be a leader of the Israelite people. And this was a big job, and Moses, he was really humble about it. But Miriam and Aaron, well, they were jealous that God chose Moses, for them. they thought that God should speak to them in the same way that he spoke to Moses. So, you know what? They complained. And it says right here, 
in Numbers 12. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Uh-oh, sounds like uh, they're in big trouble. What did God do? Well, you know how when we disobey our parents and then they warn us saying, don't make me come down there. Well, that is exactly what happened. God came down and appeared to them in a pillar of cloud. And then he corrected Miriam and Aaron and told them that Moses was not an ordinary prophet. God didn't speak to him through visions and dreams like other prophets. He, he spoke to Moses face to face. And because they did not honor God's choice, they were punished. And when the cloud lifted, Miriam's face turned white as snow and, and she was shut out of the camp for seven days because she had leprosy. Wow, that's a big time out for Miriam. And all because she was jealous? Man, you know, I can see how I've been jealous toward you, Jenny. God made you really fast and you stayed humble through it all. I definitely don't want God to come down and strike me with leprosy. Well, you know, God was really gracious to Miriam, actually. I mean, she could have died from leprosy, but God healed her after seven days. And you know what? God's been really gracious to us, too, Sue. Well, really? How's that? Well, by sending his son, Jesus. You see, back in the Old Testament, God spoke to his people in different ways, like through prophets or this pillar of cloud. And, but today, he speaks to us through his son, Jesus. Listen, hear what it says in Hebrews 1, 1 through 2. Long ago, in many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Wow. So Jesus is the word of God. And because Jesus died for us, we can follow him, talk to him, and he can talk to us the way that Miriam wanted to. Exactly, Sue. Yes. And God's word, it's so powerful. It can save us and change our hearts to be more like him. Wow. That's amazing. And God's word is the greatest gift we could ask for. I might not be jealous of anything. You know what, Jenny? I I'm so sorry. I'm really happy for you and all of your success. Oh, thanks, Sue. Well, you know, I couldn't have done it without my favorite racing buddy. <laughs> so why don't you hurry up and get over here so we can work out together, all right? Hey, I'll time you. Are you ready? Set, go! And that's a wrap. Hip 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 hip